I believe we are live. Uh, hello. Hello. Um, w welcome to the second in our afternoon um, seminar series here at Grand Ireland Live. My name is Rory Kavanagh. I'm the editor here at Grand Ireland. Uh, and today's panel discussion um, is all about the transition from studying to the world of work. Uh, and we have a, a great panel here with us today to discuss this wide ranging topic. And we're hoping we'll get plenty of questions from the audience too. So please put your questions in the chat function and we will uh, we will do our best to address them all or as many as we can um, where possible. So uh, let, let me just give a very brief introduction to the to the panel that we have here today. Um, I'm delighted to be joined by C.K. Backway McEvitt. And she's a, she's a career coach with Dublin Business School. We also have Emma Boyne, who's a graduate recruitment and senior associate with PwC. We have Adele Finn, a learning advisory and senior analyst with Accenture. And we've Colin Lynch, a talent development manager with Clan Bia. Thanks so much to you all for joining us here today. We really do appreciate you taking the time uh, to provide us with knowledge and your insights on this topic. Um, if, if, if it's okay with everyone, I'll just very quickly, if you'd like to introduce yourselves, Emma, you're on the right of my screen, so I'll start with you. A quick introduction yeah. to yourself. No problem at all. Um, hi, everybody. My name is Emma, and I work on the graduate recruitment team in PwC. So we would recruit across a range of programs into graduate roles, um, work placement, and summer internships. Uh, so PwC have offices in seven counties across Ireland um, and we would take in or around 800 students on each year um, into our different programs. So delighted to be here today and happy to answer any questions that you have. Great. Idel, you can put yourself next. Yeah, thanks Rory. So yeah, hi everyone. My name is Idel and I'm part of um, Accenture based in Dublin. So I joined the um, Accenture Technology Graduate Programme um, about I think it was three and a half years ago. So I joined straight after college. So definitely um, if anyone's um, totally understand the transition into, um, into career life versus college. And yeah, so what I do as well is I work part of the university action team. So we help you know, promote um, and pro promote awareness um, around the Accenture Graduate Campaign and um, in all the colleges in Ireland. So yeah, really and excited to be here. Great, thanks very much. CK. Uh, hi guys, my name is Nzaki Packer McEvitt, but everybody calls me CK. At this point, you should know my intro because it's not my first time going around with the Grand Ireland. Um, if I always say that if you can't remember my name, think of Calvin Klein, same style, just not as expensive. Uh, I work in DVS as a career coach. Um, so essentially, I'm supporting students of all nationalities and all academic backgrounds and really um, finding their passions and equipping them with the tools so that they will be able to reach career success um, in, in a nutshell so i do content creation all the way to hosting podcasts um delivering workshops uh, rory kind of asking me questions to come into grad Ireland. i'm joking uh, <laughs> anything to do really with um the transition uh not even to do with student to graduate but it's more in regards to just transitioning um into achieving career success so yeah thanks very much and uh, colin yourself Thanks, Rory. My name, uh, hi guys, my name is Colm Lynch. Uh, I work for Glambia as Talent Development Manager, uh, principally for uh, Pure Ambition, which is our global graduate talent development program. But uh, with my direct colleague, Susan Queeley on the team, looking at internships and work placements. And so this particular panel uh, concept is of great interest to me. It's very much the DNA of, of what I do within the team, within the graduate team. So very much looking forward to talking to it, not just in an Irish, but even a global perspective. Okay, great. And Colm, since we're, we're talking to you, we'll, we'll start with yourself. Okay. Um, so uh, just, I mean, this is a, it's a very broad area. People have different experiences in college. People have had some very different experiences over the last few years in particular, um, in terms of, you know, their studies, the environment they've had to study in, um, you know, the chance of exams in remote or hybrid environments. And, you know, to start your, 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 either your, your career uh, or your job search, uh, you know, in this, you know, during these times, it must be very challenging. If you if you were to talk to a student who has graduated, but has maybe had, you know, a very difficult final year and is unsure of, you know, the next step or is in, unsure whether the, the job that they've taken is right for them, what are some key questions you should be asking yourself as you're kind of at this fork in the road? Yeah, it's, it's a really good one, Rory. I, I, mean, I mean, the first thing I'd point out before even somebody to ask questions of themselves is to realize very much empathy is the name of the game here. So 
as much as there may be students in final year or just making decisions moving into the workplace, I mean, our graduate associates, our global workforce, I know with our colleagues here on the panel, it's been identical, you know, for all of us over the last 18, 18 months, two years. So we're all in the same boat as far as that's concerned. And, and, and I, can, I can totally understand, particularly from the students' perspective, their ability to get out and about, like as much as, you know, there's great opportunities here in a virtual space, it's in some ways more difficult than usual, right? To try and get out and network and learn more about companies and have that kind of chat by the water cooler. So there's definitely an added advantage there. But but even with the added advantage, there are opportunities. And, and so even speaking to our own graduates within Glambia, it's kind of flipping what we have, the reality of what we have in, in, in a positive effect. So I say to our current graduates, and I even say to students now that, you know, if you've got a particular passion of working in Singapore one day, let's say in professional services, well, we're in that world where we're willing to, you know, communicate and network virtually. And there may now be the opportunities and, and let's say the acceptance of, of communication that may not necessarily have been around a few years ago. So the questions are asking kind of more, it kind of flipping it into a positive environment and I think taking advantage yeah. of what we have. Okay, yeah, that's that's a very good point. And indeed, there's a, there's a poll I think we're running here uh, on, on the platform just to mean... In addition to the challenges, it's obviously a time of great excitement, a great opportunity. So are you looking forward to this transition? Please just give us your feedback there. Yes or no, and we'll give the, um, and we'll give the results towards the end of the session. Um, Adele, what supports do companies like yourselves uh, give? You know, what supports would you provide to, to, to students um, c coming into the, you know, to the graduate work environment? It could be on a graduate program. It could be in an internship. Uh, and what are some of the things that you've noticed um, over the past 18 months? Yeah, absolutely. So I'll probably give a background, um, just more detail myself. So I graduated from University College Cork and I did um, an Arts International degree and then I did a Master's in Business Information Systems. And um, so, yeah, over and especially I think the the last two years where everything, you know, you know, overnight really like went from working from working in the office to working from home. And um, so you can see here at the moment, I'm still working from home and um, the last two years. And luckily in my role at the moment, I'm able to, um, I, I work mainly with um, graduate new joiners um, and bringing them into the company um, from like an orientation perspective. So yeah, it's really, you know, um, really interesting to be able to see the change um, and the, like, as well, all the support that we offer. So I think as well, um, so yeah, what we do at the moment, um, we offer graduate consulting in five streams, um, ranging from analytics, interactive to technology, and as well, we do summer internships as well. So yeah, I think at the moment, um, you know, we are, I suppose as well, what um, Colin was saying, you know, empathy is the game. So we are really, you know, aware and understanding of, you know, students coming from um, college where they may have been, you know, doing college remotely the last year or two years or so and transitioning then into the workplace. So I think it's really as well, it's just, you know, for students to look after themselves as well in that transition. So, you know, building a routine and, you know, some you know working from nine to five um, Monday to Friday is a huge change as well from being in college you know maybe you had a lecture at two o'clock on Tuesday or something so I think really as well it's you know looking after yourself and really making sure that you have a routine um, and able to, to rest as well. Okay uh, Emma um, PwC have always taken on you know a, a relatively speaking quite a large amount of, of, of graduates and indeed interns as well and um what are some of the trends that, you, that you've noticed in terms of, from a positive perspective, some of the skills that you've noticed um, increasing or, you know, have you know, what, what positive changes have you noticed in terms of the interns and graduates you've worked with over the past 18 months? Yeah, I suppose we're actually probably so impressed over the last eight months how well the students adapted to um, the environment that we were just forced into in the last 18 months. Um, obviously, PwC is a training firm, so support is really important from day one. Um, so for in terms of summer interns and um, work placement students that wouldn't necessarily be in an exam training contract, we would make sure that they have um, shadowing opportunities to be on calls with people now. 
Um, and then in terms of our graduates, we would make sure that everyone has a, a buddy and a coach and um, support system when they join. I suppose the thing that we have to um, acknowledge is that students aren't getting access to um, when they're in the office listening to phone calls that you'd learn things from from different people around yeah. you. And um, so it's important then that we take that into account and that we make sure that students are still getting all the um training and all of that that they need so there would be a huge emphasis placed on all the supports given to them whether it's from you know our recent associates given training every now and then um but yeah i suppose it is it's just really important that the students understand that the support is there and that they're making use of it um and but they really have adapted so well and um not afraid to put their hands up and ask for help or jump on a call and um, so i think they actually adapted much quicker and much much better than we ever imagined. Okay, and I think that's that, that that's a very good insight, uh, Emma. In terms of when it comes to when we talk about today's graduates and the challenges and you know the the, the difficulties that they're facing, but there's so much to be positive about. Um, in terms of, I think the most important word you said there was um, resilience. You know, and uh, that student graduates um, are showing that in spades. And CK, I'm going to go to yourself. I'm going to I'm going to ask some questions that we've got already. Uh, as we go, because we are a little bit tight for time. So sorry to just drop this one on you, CK, but uh, maybe you can help this uh, this, this, this um, student out. After The question is, uh, after college, uh, I last in a job for three months that I didn't find fulfilling at all. Uh, now that I've been unemployed for a month and they, they're they applying for jobs that they believe they're qualified for, but they're not getting responses, they're not getting interviews, they're not getting um, offers. When you find yourself in that sort of situation where you take a job, you probably had great hopes for it. It didn't work out. Um, and now you're kind of stuck in, in a rut. How do you move forward? What advice would you have that? Now, without knowing the exact specifics, but we're just talking, if you can make the advice as general as possible. I think um, because this is, I'm going to talk about this from personal experience. The first thing is great. to um, acknowledge the job for it is what it is. You know, that kind of way in the sense of it's a job that you took on, you had expectations for it and it didn't work out. But what are some of the lessons that you can move forward um, with it so what are some of the transferable skills that you can take from this role and it also helps you I think this is something that a lot of us are um huge we're, we're big on it is not being kind of grateful that this is an opportunity that didn't work out but what would have happened if you'd spent 20 years building your career aiming for that job and then it didn't work out what if you spent all that time studying that knowledge and building it up and that's where it is it's helping you identify okay the, I don't enjoy this. It didn't work out. What was that I didn't enjoy about it? What are the aspects about it? Because sometimes I think we forget that all the jobs that we have to do have um, different skill sets, criteria, and what's needed, what you're actually going to use. Um, so Rory, I would say an example, my role would be a very um, fit person facing type of role. Do you know that kind of way? So do I have good communication skills? Is that what I struggled with? Do you know, it's really just breaking it down to see the parts that you didn't enjoy um, and then going on from there and then helping yourself to identify exactly the parts that you did, then starting to go for jobs where you're going to be able to speak about things that you enjoy doing. You can talk about how you have experience and it may be limited and might be small, um, but that's another part for it. But the other thing I would say to you is um, support systems are really, really great for when you find yourself um, encountering any type of project or activity that fills you with no purpose and then you get really unmotivated you don't know how to move on forward um support is really really great so this is a times where this is a great time to get a mentor maybe someone to help you with getting that career plan into place um great time to, to reach out to people like emma colin and adele asking them about you know the support services that are available there and um, any job potential opportunities and things like that as well and um, so those would be the two things i would say is just don't focus so much on that it didn't work out focus on okay it didn't work out why it didn't work out but it's a blessing in disguise because you're not stuck doing a job that fills you with no purpose and no fulfillment um, and then the second thing is support is absolutely crucial it's the only way to really get us um through any type of challenge just having someone to be there tell you like it's gonna be all right like you know i faced this before or you know yeah. this is gonna change or this is how it's gonna look up then from there so that's what i would suggest thanks very much ck um Callum, i'm gonna ask put another question your way if you don't mind just when people when they graduate there's a question here from a from a student or graduate that they felt very overwhelmed uh, after graduating and you know just not knowing what exactly it is that they wanted to do and 
you know, yeah. how important is it to take stock of your, okay, not just take stock of the options you have, but also the skills you've built, the hard skills and the soft skills and the life experience skills, the whole thing that makes the whole um, um, employability package, I suppose. Any tips on how you can kind of take stock of your of your skills, your experience and how you make best use of them? Yeah, completely. And, and I'm even thinking of that question, Worry, in relation to the last one you just asked with that chap sure. there with one month, you know, trying to figure it out. The, the, the best place to start, I think, from my perspective, certainly how we view it from the point of view of Glambia, you know, for anybody applying into any of our graduate programs. I mean, it starts with technical skills from the perspective of, you know, what is the student studying and what more importantly, why are they studying it and what's their favorite module and how might their favorite module connect to a company like Glambia, you know, and start from there trying to find the match from the student's perspective in terms of why there might be a right fit. But that usually is a, a, a usual good starter for 10 for a student to try and figure it out. From there, then it's it's then it's beyond just the technical connection and trying to find a strategic objective that you know Glambia are in the middle of that a student might enjoy. It then moves into personality and values, and these are questions I think students can ask themselves in relation to well, what what are your personal values? What are your anchors in life? What are you looking to achieve? Like you might not have specific answers. But what would you like to achieve in life? What will get you out of bed at seven o'clock on a Monday morning? Do you know what I mean with the spring in your step and if you start to think through those kind of those values and then from that those types of projects and those strategic interests you know we're we're a public listed company you know in over 30 countries and it's very easy to see what we're doing at home in Ireland and around the world and if you find those connections you'll start to notice then that your CV and your cover letters should have interesting connecting points as to why you know you won't be you will be a great obviously uh, individual within Glambia's universe but we obviously see the connection as well and so starting from there, I think usually ends up being kind of a positive starter for students. Okay. Okay. Um, Adele, this is another one. <laughs> this, is a bit of a, this is a tough one. But um, if you could... If you could tell yourself one thing, one thing you wish you knew before you started your job, what would it be? Sorry, Rory, I think my some internet dropped there. So if it was, if I could tell myself. Oh, that's a good excuse. It's a good excuse. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, just if I. I <laughs> yeah, if you could, if, if one thing you wish you knew before you started your first job, you know, what, what, what sort of thing would you say, oh, I wish I knew that before I, you know, jumped into this? Absolutely. Um, what would it be? Or what Perfect. would one of the things, or more than one thing? <laughs> no, great question. Yeah. So I think when I, first or when I left basically college or when I graduated I started Accenture in the graduate program three weeks later so really I uh, just went you know deep dive straight in there where some you know of my or some of my friends you know had a few months off and it really depends really um whenever you get like an offer or anything but I definitely think something I wish I knew was that just you know how much of a massive change it is you know really I just thought that you know, oh, college, I'm starting my career, it's fine. I really didn't, you know, realise how much of, you know, adaptation and, you know, change that I was actually going through at the time and as well with all my colleagues as well, you know, because I think as well, like, it just takes a long, you know, might take like a few weeks, a few months for you to settle into any job. And especially if you're starting your career and completely changing your lifestyle from, you know, going to college where you have, you know, your timetable set um, to then being, you know, expected to be in an office or online at nine o'clock um, until, you know, nine to five or, you know, nine to six or something. So really, I just thought that something, you know, to kind of, you know, just take it easy, I think really was just kind of, you know, really looking forward to starting my career and just like deep dive straight into it and, you know, did so much. But I think maybe so I just maybe pulled it back a bit and just kind of like took it easy and week by week and just realized that this was, you know, a huge change for me and for everyone starting um, just to, you know, take it easy and mind yourself. Yeah, of course. Always good advice. And Emma, just building on that, um, we, we talked to other graduates and they, you know, they can be very confident in college. They can be very confident in group work or in projects. They can be very confident in the interview. They can be very confident about what it is they want to do. Then when they go into the work environment, they can find, you know, the gap that knowledge gap of actually having to do the job, they find that um, very challenging and it can be a dent to their confidence because they previously thought themselves very confident people. But until you're actually, you know, walking in those shoes, um, you know, it, it can be very hard to know how you'll perform. So uh, any advice would you have for students and graduates on, you know, while you may 
think you're well prepared for a role, you know, any sort of um, key questions or key, you know, uh, you know, milestones you, sh you should be looking at in terms of how you're preparing for the, for the job? Yeah, absolutely. First of all, um, starting your career is a lot different to anything that you'll have done before. So it's being patient with yourself and everyone has to start somewhere. And um, people may have had, you know, part time jobs all throughout college and all of that. So they'll have built all the basic skills like relationship building, you know, maybe leadership skills, communication skills. So it's bringing them then into your career. I think it's not being afraid to put your hand up for anything that you need help with and um, using the, the most of the resources that you have around you. A lot of people will be available to you when you first join. So it's making sure that you don't feel like a burden on anybody and making sure that you're, you know, chatting to people, putting your hand up to learn new things. Um, but just giving yourself a chance. It's a totally new environment, trying to enjoy it, kind of touching a bit on what Colm said as well. I think it's, you know, making sure what you're doing every day is something that you like. So a starting point is what modules do you like and how can you match them then to a career? Um, it's really important. Um, but yeah, I think it's just really, you know, also joining a company maybe that has different opportunities. So you may really like the culture of a company. You might necessarily love the role you're in, but is there opportunities to move around? And um, so I know for myself, when I joined PwC um, seven years ago, I would have joined a different team. And I've since been on two other teams since then. Um, and most recently graduate recruitment for the last uh, kind of four and a half years. So finding a company maybe that there's other opportunities, but that you really like everything else about the company. So um, just not being too hard on yourself that you're gonna find your feet um, and it's just being patient and making sure that what you're doing every day is something that you're enjoying. Okay, thanks very much. Emma, CK, um, this is probably one of my favorite questions we get asked a lot is, and especially now when, you know, we, we now live in a world where, where, the, where, the, where the lower paid first job um, is kind of much gone and now, most graduates do internships okay and now over the last two years um people have done virtual internships and people are back doing internships now which is great but they're very much an established part of the graduate recruitment landscape but for people who weren't able to get them and then they're trying to showcase their employability to an employer and it's the old chicken and the egg they want experience but they you couldn't get experience but you're but you have the but you have the degree for the job you believe you have the skills how do you showcase yourself best if you're going for a job that you weren't able to do the internship you wanted to do, you weren't able to showcase yourself to that company the way you wanted to. Um, but ha ha a few tips how, how you can still showcase that you have what it takes to at least get an interview and hopefully get your foot in the door. Yeah, um, I think one of the best things, this is actually something similar that we had before. Uh, sometimes it's all about leveraging your relationships that you have with your network um, so that you can basically showcase those skills. So is it that you could potentially get involved in a project where you could leverage and showcase those skills? Now, it may not be a paid job and it may not be an internship, but it's your involvement or contributions in some type of capacity. That's the first way. Uh, second way as well is I'm a huge, huge advocate of, um, you know, a your personal branding. That's where it's really, really important how you carry yourself. So, um, you know, it's great to say that, oh, I have all these skills and all these experiences and everything. But if nobody knows where to find this information, there's no way to verify or confirm it. You know, how is an employer supposed to really be like, oh, yeah, this is definitely the right person. So I think one of the best things that I one of the things that I'd always advocate for would be being kind of your own promoting yourself on the likes of social media um if there is a specific skill set that you do possess and um, maybe you didn't get the chance to expand on it in um an internship do it by yourself and then talk about the lessons and what you achieved and basically what you saw from that it just showcases that not only do you have a hard work ethic but you also self-motivated yourself starter you're not always waiting for someone to come kind of step in and prevent present you this amazing opportunity where you're going to expand into the most magical being that you could be life i wish worked like that i really really do but there are some times where you actually need to go out and you know learn that skill set yourself so that you can come back and say to an employer here and um, this is what i've done you know i did this in an internship however i didn't get to cover these bits and pieces but I did source a project. I worked with somebody on an Instagram digital marketing campaign, you know, something like that. And um, I think a lot of times we're always looking for someone to come to us 
with a specific um, role and opportunity where we can expand that skill set. Uh, sometimes just taking a step back, reflect and be like, okay, where, can, where else can I learn these specific skills or where else can I develop these skills? How else can I do it? Because they are other ways that are possible. Okay, yeah. thanks very much. Colin, would you, just because it is such a broad area, would you have any uh, insight yourself mm -hmm. on how students can bridge that experience gap where they may not have got that internship or been able to, you know, be in there in Glan B is showing you what they could do and add to your team? Yeah, absolutely. Whatever happens, students have hobbies. They, they, they do things, right? Uh, they set up music concerts or, you know, they work with friends on a volunteering campaign. They do something. So the question is, how do you translate that into something that a global organization would immediately understand, you know? So when we're thinking about it on our side, we're thinking in terms of, right, have they ever managed a project before? Can they, can they talk about it? What kind of reflections do they have from that? Do they know how to identify a particular issue, place scope on that issue, you know, place the nature of the project and then, you know, execute the work? Guaranteed, there are students who've got plenty of examples there, even if it's not directly in the workplace. And so I even remember, like, uh, when I was 20, I went uh, as a student to southern Italy. We played music, and I remember we weren't making a lot of money, so we went down the Amalfi Coast and we started playing Bruce Springsteen songs. And that was a story I told about 10 years ago in an interview, you know, about kind of realizing your audience and kind of, you know, placing the correct brand and, you know, making more money on the evening and little things like that. Um, every student's got examples. It's just how they're able to identify what those examples are and, and communicate them in a way that a global business can clearly understand. Okay, thanks so much, um, Colm. Uh, some of it, uh, and it's been raised by a few, a few attendees, and uh, indeed it was mentioned there by CK, and it was mentioned by Dell, I think, as well. And while I'm just in the interest of time, because I'm really tight, Colm, I'm going to throw this at you as well. Um, people talk about like uh, mentors and the value of mentors. How do you get one? What's the good step? How, how would you how would you go about building up that? You know, um, you know. Is it through LinkedIn? Is it through a, a friendly email? How would you say if someone to get in touch with you and just ask a few questions about the job or, you know, what, 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 the, what, what a role, what a graduate role involves? A few tips on getting a mentor. To, 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 but what, to, what to, to me, Rory, is it? Okay. Yeah, to you uh, as well. Yeah, Sorry, no worries. Just in the interest no, of time. <laughs> of, of course. No, the, the, the quickest way to do it first, you need to identify what's the reason for the mentorship in the first place. What, how do you want to progress? Once you get to that point, then it's a question of asking three people who you know in your direct orbit, whether it's direct friends to say who's the most important person who you know who might be able to answer this question for me, and you go from there. Okay, okay. Um, Adele, uh, you know, any other tips on building your network who might be able to help you out, be it in terms of mentorship or job shadowing or just some even some advice? Yeah, absolutely. So what I found when I started um, Accenture in my first job, um, I, what I found really valuable was that um, every employee um, all across the globe in Accenture have a career counsellor um, or as a people lead. So this is someone who, um, you know, if you're an analyst, you, you normally be like a manager um, or someone senior level who would, um, you know, represent you in any talent discussions, performance, achievement. Um, and they're basically like your go to. And um, if you have any, you know, concerns, any if you need any advice on anything, whatever career related, um, they're your go to person and they will help you navigate your career then. So, um, like, for example, I had, um, you know, a chat with my career counselor and people lead this morning. And so, yeah, we really, you know, check in on them or they check in on us um, quite regularly or whenever we would like. Um, and yeah, it's kind of nice to know that, you know, it's from all the levels up. So, you know, our CEO, Julie Sweet, has a career, you know, counselor as well. And um, so I think that's really good for mentorship as well. And there's also other, you know, you can reach out to anyone in Accenture for, you know, any mentorship, like networking, if there's an area that you would like to get into and, you know, definitely setting up like, you know, coffee connects and, and meetups with them virtually or in person if you can. And um, so there's really, you know, opportunities out there for networking and mentorship for, for new grads. Um, Emma, a quick question on um, LinkedIn etiquette. I know some people, if, they're, if they get a job interview or they get an internship interview, they may start trying to befriend half the company on uh, uh, LinkedIn. Um, any tips on, you know, what do's and don'ts very quickly? Yeah, I think the most important is maybe to have a 
bit of have a look at who you're interviewing with um, and definitely know a little bit about their background and um, where they came from just so that you can build that rapport in interview and um, I would definitely use that as a starting point and just even if you can have a little look about what the team structure is or if you can figure that out on through LinkedIn it's important as well. Okay, great. Thanks very much. Um, and again, just looking, we'll, uh, CK, I'll put the last question your way, if you don't mind. Um, three tips you'd have for dealing with a setback. You know, you didn't get the job, you're not sure what you want to do, um, or, you know, you've, you've taken a job that you didn't like. You know, you're probably repeating yourself a little bit in terms of what you said in your first answer, but uh, even two or three steps about how to reassess after, after a slight setback at the start of your job hunt and how to refocus and move forward. Um, I think the first thing would be if you have the opportunity to maybe speak to the person that you were um, interviewing for to find out maybe what are some of your development areas that would make you successful the next time you were to go for that job, I would say is one of them. Um, two would be just regards of having an actual development plan. So sometimes we stick to our strengths and our weaknesses. I hate the term weaknesses. It's because of the fact that you have this mindset where you're saying, I will never be good at this skill. I'm already accepting defeat so maybe it's a sense of having a look at your strengths in your development areas just so you can increase that percentage so even though you may not be um you know the best at it you can still say you're developing um from that and then the third thing i would say is um it's about getting a mentor so i'm going to go back Rory, to what i said it's about support um it's easy for us to talk about dealing with setbacks and when you're on your own you feel like it's a lot bigger but when you have a mentor specifically somebody who has life experience who has a little bit of a career experience as well they can just help you to see that some opportunities some missed opportunities are actually a blessing in disguise um and i'll say it again from regards of what i my entire career journey you know i studied hr i really wanted to work in recruitment i wanted to be emma like that's what i wanted to do i wanted to work within recruiting and getting people into the roles and then i discovered i absolutely hated everything to do with recruitment but instead i learned those skills about recruitment so now i get to impart that on our students so it wasn't it wasn't a complete loss because all those interview techniques, you know, job descriptions, CV writing, all of that, I get to write workshops on it. I get to create content that's actually accurate and useful. And I know it works because I've actually done it or lived through it. So those would be really my three top tips. And I think the, the yes. mentor specifically that one would experience would always be the biggest thing for me because the other reason is um, they'll always give you uh, the challenges of what that career might possibly be like but also the other okay. challenges that you can face you know okay i've yeah. just been given a two a two minute warning here so um <laughs> I, I better i better wrap this up but um let's start let's end it on an on an optimistic note we ran a poll just for how excited where people are you know in terms of the transition um you know where they're looking were they looking forward to it and 92 percent said yes so there's indeed plenty of optimism out there um Listen, I know there's plenty more questions I could ask you all, but I'd like to thank uh, the panel so much for taking the time to join us today. Thank you, CK. Thank you, Emma. Thank you, Adele. Thank you, Colm. Thanks, everyone, for joining us here today. And apologies, apparently a bit of a foggy camera here, so it was a bit blurry, my apologies. But uh, once you could hear me and once you could hear our panellists, and thanks again for all your time. All the best. Bye-bye. Thank you. See you all. Thanks, everyone. Best of luck. Best of luck. Bye-bye.